We're back with more Reddit stories. I'm Shane, and my guests today are Chance and Amanda. Hi. Greetings. There's a reason you both are here today, and it's because the theme is service industry, and I believe Woo! you both have. Yeah, you both have experience. We're on a roller coaster. <laughs> Yay! Whoa. Uh, you both worked in the service industry. Since I was like 14. Same. Yeah. We both had so many different places so, that we worked at. We worked at so many different restaurants. And and was it fun? I would say yes. Some places, yes. Some places were super fun. Like you were only there for the people. Yes. The money wasn't even that good. Yeah. Okay. And <laughs> I was some... always about money first. I was always about money no, first. No, not me. I was always about Vibe. people vibes first. Yeah. And that's why you work here. And that's why I work here. <laughs> <laughs> True. Um, uh, but I'm sure you have tons of stories yep. of insane customers, insane experiences. And uh, we're about to hear a bunch from some other people. Ooh. Oh, I can't Anonymously wait. Anonymously on the internet. So let's hop into it. So is it, it about restaurants, restaurants and bars? I, I, it's probably a lot. It's service industry. In general. In a general, so there, there might be, and it might be from different perspectives. Fun. Might be from the perspective of a customer, might be from the worker. Oh, the oh I love that, but customer? I don't trust Woo. anything, anything the customer I, says. Never. The customer is never right. They no. are almost never, never. right. <laughs> like, never. Like, very few and far between. Okay, well, I think this first one has to do with a customer. Great. So let's see. Uh, this comes from legal advice. Regular customer keeps telling us that her latte causes seizures. Okay, stop drinking the coffee. Stop. <laughs> like one seizure is enough. It must be a really good latte. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's let's see what's going on here. We have a regular customer at our coffee shop that has autoimmune epilepsy. They claim that when their drink is made wrong, after we correctly remake it 15 times, they experience seizures. I don't want to be liable for them ordering something that causes them to have these seizures. My coworker and I highly doubt that food and beverages cause seizures, but they order a tiny fraction of an amount of espresso in their latte. It is a half caffeinated beverage, but every drink made correctly is sent back because it tastes burnt. So we decided on giving them half of a half of, of a caffeinated shot. A quarter. Yeah, essentially. We feel as if they're trying to plot against us because they have a spreadsheet of workers who make their drink right. Sorry if this was put under the wrong thread. We all genuinely feel like they want to sue us for giving them seizures. Edit. I'd also like to point out that this customer is certainly a problem. They would stalk a barista from a different location and try to convince said barista to not move in with her boyfriend before marriage. The customer ended up finding out where the boyfriend worked and tried to get him fired from his job. Now this customer is at our establishment after getting banned from their previous location. People in our region that have worked in our company for 10 plus years say that this customer has always been a problem. As a supervisor, I had spent a whole hour working on their drink. 15 plus drinks later, no solution. They ended up just taking the uh, they ended up just taking the last drink because they realized it was a waste of their time. Next day, they asked for five remakes of their drink. I got fed up and told them that I'll call them an ambulance if they get another remake. That or I can issue you a refund because we are not going to come to a solution if we keep going. They agreed to a refund and have now consecutively asked for refunds these past two or so months. So a uh, quick note about this. We don't know this person's medical history, nor do we know where this story is based. Uh, and you know, laws, whenever it comes to legal advice, laws depend on where you live. Usually in legal advice posts, they state what state they're in because that affects the advice that people give. We're not here to give legal advice because we're not, you know, we don't know. Lawyers. Well, yeah, but uh, this just in general is, sounds brutal. Stop serving them. I, I know. Sounds like, like the last place did. What are you yeah. supposed yeah. to do about that? Because it is weird that they stalked a person. Like that's like, okay, but also too burnt. That's the beans. Yes, no, I know, but like, how does that, it, how did that correlate to you having a seizure? Yeah. Does that mean like too burnt means too much espresso this for this person? person needs to get person? a life. Like, yeah, yeah, I don't know what's going on there. Yeah, it's. It, I mean, it, this sounds like extreme behavior. The stalking stuff is it's like way too much, dude. Oh my god! Like, who cares about the remaking of the drink at yeah. that point? 
We're talking about something also else here. Also, the spreadsheet. The spreadsheet was I the biggest not, red flag, honestly. I would not Forget the be stalking, the spreadsheet. Spreadsheet. This person sounds, frankly, lonely. And they're just obsessed. Yeah. And, like, this is their spot. And this is the most human interaction they have. To be honest, when I feel like when that's exactly what I think it is. I think that they're lonely. And this is how they want to have interaction. When I worked at Dunkin' Donuts back in the day, there was a woman who had... So much sunscreen on her face. So much sunscreen on her mm. face. And she would be there my entire shift, like start to finish. And she would always come up and complain about her coffee. And she was like. Oh. At Dunkin' Donuts. At Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> she would say that it I was. I expect craft coffee. Mm. She would say that it was burnt. And I was like 15 years old. So I was like, oh, I want to make this woman happy. She would never, ever tip. Mm. But she was always there every shift. And finally, my manager was like, we, we, we can't keep remaking her coffee. Yeah. She's just here every day. Yeah. First in, like, last out. You got to set healthy boundaries. Yeah. Yeah, I she mean. She needed a friend. The, like, as I said, the medical aspect, we don't know. We don't know these people. But I do think for a lot of people who ask to have drinks remade very consistently, I can't help but think it's a little bit of a high they get. Yeah. Like from, from a little bit of power. It's the pickles guy from SpongeBob. <laughs> wow. Who's that? There's no pickles on my sandwich. Ew! <laughs> <laughs> yuck, yuck, yuck. Um, comments here. Not a lawyer, but I have epilepsy. It makes absolutely no sense why someone would risk a seizure over a coffee drink right. not being prepared properly. Correct. Taste and smell alone is no indicator if a food or drink will trigger a seizure. If the customer's seizures are triggered so easily, they should take proper precautions. Uh, someone responded to that saying, 100%. I also have epilepsy and avoid anything that can trigger me like the plague. The only way she could tell if the drink is wrong is by tasting it, which could cause a seizure. There's no way I'd risk that. And I'd say most people with epilepsy would have similar sentiments. Someone else said, sometimes you have to fire the customer. <laughs> someone, said three someone said, three remakes. You get three. After the third one, it's, I'm terribly sorry, but we're unable to accommodate you, and yes. here's a refund. Boom. Please leave. 15 plus lattes is them just straight up f***ing with you. What a terrible tool. Three. Three. No. Two. You get, one, you, get, I, you get the first one. You get the remake. Nope. This is this is what we've given you. This is the try again. We're not trying three times. Yeah. Sorry. This is someone same. Also, my favorite thing to do is when you have the person that always asks for a remake. You know what I started doing after a while? I'd be like, "Oh my god, you're so right. I'll remake it." And I go in the corner oh, yep. and I shake it and I give it right back. And I'm like, "Here you go." And they're like, "So much better." Yeah. We've had that. We've I've had done that. that. I've done that. We've I had pull that bullshit like that. too. Mm -hmm. Well, it's true. It's the because they just get a f***ing, it's in their f***ing head. Exactly. 15 sips, you're, they, you're done they with your coffee. They took 15 sips yeah. of 15 lattes. They've drank so much coffee just now. Uh, Epilepsy. <laughs> I'm sorry. But I, I agree with these comments of if you have a very serious medical condition that could be triggered yeah. by a coffee, Stop I, I would drinking not, I wouldn't coffee. trust a barista. Don't, don't I would, risk no. it. A barista's not a doctor. And no. that's really scary to have epilepsy because there's so many things that can trigger it, especially like movies nowadays with like the flashing. But I feel like if maybe just like, yeah, don't. Yes. Just don't. Yeah, yeah and just the responsibility don't. of like movies and stuff is to let you know, hey, there's stuff in this. But you are going to a coffee shop, you know there's caffeine in it. Yeah. They're telling you the amount that they're giving you. And it's just, it just, this is obviously this person, like I said, remove the medical stuff. They're, they're a stalker. So I don't really have much empathy for them. That's so the industry, though. You yeah. meet people that you're like, how are you walking this planet? Yes. That's, that's what happens when you work in the restaurant industry. 100%. Is you're like, how are you on this planet? And also, there's so many times with groups of people where I'm like, you can't figure out how to pay this check together. Like you are grown ass adults. <laughs> yes. Like, oh my like God. it is. You have never gone to a restaurant together with. Maybe you haven't, but like, we are in 2023. Yes. Like, you can split it. Venmo. Uh, Venmo. Like, come on now. Yep. How are you guys operating in real life? Yep. Because that don't make no sense. Yes. I love this next one. Okay. Okay. This one's awesome. We might have a legend, based on the title, but I might be very wrong. <laughs> Am I the asshole because I brought a bottle of ranch into a restaurant? Absolutely not. That's a legend. You're right. <laughs> we'll see. We will see. Maybe we're going to eat our words here. Oh. 
Last... How big is the bottle? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've got the ranch. <laughs> Last night I went to dinner with Michael. Uh, it was our third date and he took me to one of his favorite restaurants. It was a hole in the wall Polish slash Hungarian place. We ordered our food and he ordered a sampler plate so I could try different things. There are very few things I don't eat with ranch. I just like it, and it helps make some things to easier to eat, so I always have it with my meals. When we get our food, I ask for some ranch. The waiter said they didn't have any, and offered to bring out some kind of sour cream and dill sauces. I tried them, and they just weren't the same. I told Michael I'd be right back, took my wallet, and left the restaurant. I had seen a convenience store close by when we arrived, so I went there, bought a bottle of ranch, and came back. Michael looked shocked, but didn't say anything and ate his food. The food was great and we got some conversation going. When the waiter came over and said outside food wasn't allowed, I said dressing isn't outside food and they didn't have what I needed to enjoy my meal. I didn't want to ruin the evening so I took it out, of, out to my car and returned. When we finished and left, Michael thanked me for coming out with him but said it was really off-putting that I had to leave and go buy a bottle of dressing instead of just going one meal without it. Yeah. I told him I wouldn't have had to do that if they had ranch or any dressings like a normal restaurant. Oh. He didn't walk me to my car or anything and just left. I went home and told my roommate about my date and his attitude and she asked me if I was being serious. She thinks I had bad etiquette and embarrassed Michael to the point that he was probably going to stop talking to me. I don't think what I did was really all that bad. It was a condiment, not an entire meal from some place. Was I wrong for what I did? I, I redact the, uh, yeah, the legend. Definitely not. Dude, a legend. you are legend. judging. I, I thought this was gonna yeah. be like. I thought this was gonna be like Olive Garden. Yeah. yeah. It was gonna be like, I'm sorry, man. I know you have ranch, but you don't have enough. Yeah. That's I need funny. so much ranch. You are it judging a cultural like you are judging. Yeah. The already it's not like a chain restaurant or anything. It sounds it's like a, a mom and Polish, pop something. Polish Hungarian yeah, place. That's not a with dill and sour cream, which is exactly like. Sounds delicious. There, it sounds amazing. It sounds really good. The dill sauce. I'm like. Then you should have. You should have. I mean, I don't, I don't know if, she clearly probably just didn't know what type of food this was gonna be. Like she yeah. thought, I don't, this just sounds like someone who very um, American centric, like normal a normal restaurant. restaurant. Yeah, normal like, restaurant. Like probably has brutal. only been to chain restaurants. This is finally like. The thing is, it's great. It's good on her to like try other things, try new things, but. Ugh. Well also, it's not even a matter of like, are you the asshole? It's more like, that's just a really dumb thing to do on a, on clearly like a, a for, on early date. An who early is date. Michael, by who the way? Is Michael? I, I love that he's just consistently Michael. Yeah. The, this this person didn't start <laughs> off strong by just being like, last night I went to dinner with Michael. It's like, oh, what? <laughs> the one that got away. Yeah. I guess if you're like telling us the story, like, last night I went to dinner with Seth. Seth, <laughs> what you need to know about Seth? We didn't get any of that. No, no. it was just zero context. Yeah. I don't know their age. Don't know what's going on here. Um, horrible thing to do on a date. Also, I think it's a little bit weird that Michael didn't say anything well, to her coming back with ranch. Yeah, we don't know. Like maybe we don't know. I think this person would leave that shit out, but we don't know. But also, I don't know if someone did that. If I'm the type that if I was on a date and I and I was like, hey, I love this restaurant. I love this place. is really awesome. It's this hole in the wall, and you're there. And then she's like, do you have ranch? And they're like, no. And she's like, I'll be right back and leaves <laughs> and comes back with a bottle of ranch that she just bought. I'd be like, oh. And I, in my head, I'd just be like, I'm about to never talk to you again. Yep, I'll, I'll sit here for this meal. I'll also point out the fact that that was crazy what you did in a very jokey, funny way. I'll be like, you really like ranch. I'm like, I wow. hope you like music. Because it's one thing to be like, I, I can't, I, I really have a hard time with maybe the texture of, of a said food or something. But to be like, I can't eat something without ranch is so intense. I guess I'm like, uh, because maybe. ranch doesn't even like have that like, much flavor. No, it doesn't. I feel like it's, I need to solve it. I feel like I would have to be like, really? really you really went out and got ranch? I'm so embarrassed. I would have been so embarrassed. Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. I'd say it's also for me, what it often is, is not necessarily the action, but how you back up that action. And saying like normal restaurants and and like fighting back to the waiter and fi like when the waiter's like no outside food and there's like, it's just, a, it's a condiment. I'm like, that's almost more the red flag to me yeah. than going and getting the ranch. Yeah. Like, And it's one of those things that you need to be really upfront if it's like, you cannot eat a food without ranch. You need to be like, oh, you want to go out to eat? Do they have ranch? I, I have this thing where I need to have ranch with every meal. It's got and it's be also, that say that. Not that this takes away from it, but it's got to be in their head because again, 
Ranch doesn't have that much flavor. So what is it actually doing? Like it's it's a fat, it's a milky fat, right? And so it's expanding your taste buds, letting you taste more so you can palate more. So like the sour cream is gonna do it. It's just exactly. got that tang. Exactly. But then that dill sauce, it's just like, mm. I, dill sauce in my head sounds like it's gonna be like a ranch with instead of like the oregano with those Agreed. season herbs, it's gonna be dill instead of those herbs. It's not gonna be that much different. Did she even try it? She didn't even I try it. Doubt That's she tried the it. thing. No f***ing way she tried it. But would this be a, this would be a deal breaker for all of us, right? No. It would be, a, it, would be a, it wouldn't? See, it, it's a deal breaker for me because I love food. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. The ranch on anything I can I can definitely handle. The ranch on anything I can handle. Being rude consistently, like if it was a consistent rudeness to a service industry worker, that is a deal breaker for me. So it depends, because this feels like And a we're at a mom and pop restaurant. So uh, yes. like in my head, I'm like, if you need that ranch with this meal, we can box our meals up and go to a place that we can put ranch on it that's not disrespectful to the exactly. people that just cooked our meal. Exactly, it's the meal. disrespect. And also, the server must have been upset for them to say anything, because as a server, yeah. I've seen some crazy yeah. shit where people bring in crazy shit, and usually I'm like, I'm gonna just let this one go. But if it upsets me enough, yeah. I'll say something. So the server must have been I wouldn't like, have said anything. If they brought in about all right, I, I, I would have been like, like, you went to the store and got ranch. You need <laughs> help. First of all, they, I'm second of let all, that be. eat your eat your meal. They they established they they established enough information when they said like they didn't have any dressings like a normal restaurant. I'm like, all right, yeah, that's all. You're I out. To hear. That's You're all I needed out. to hear. Wait, um, is it a deal breaker? Yeah, it's a deal breaker. Of course, I'll, I'll, it's a deal breaker not because I'd be like, you have to have ranch. You're f-ing weird. It'd be that. I would say, and I would probably say this, I'd be like, hey, I love food, I love trying new foods, I love, there's not a genre of food that I've tried that I haven't been interested by or like, and I like to explore new things, and if you can't do that, then we can't work. Oh, that is true. There's so many experiences that we're limited by now. Yeah. Go find someone else who also well, just just likes basic. Food. You're right. I think it is a deal breaker. You're right on like the first couple dates. But if you are together for a while and they have this thing, well, about we're not going to get we're not going to get to that. You're right. My, deal yeah. breaker then. It's a deal breaker for me too because my stomach and my mouth is my way to my heart. Like yes. there is no way that we're not going to try all these different foods. Like you're not yes. going to be able to travel with me. No Pol- way. Polish Hungarian is not even that like no. different no. from like what no. we typically eat at no. chain restaurants. Like. Dude, you're ordering. I bet you they have delicious. schnitzel or like, uh, like bratwurst. Come on. Like, what? and if like, I ever want to go to like, fucking, I don't know, like Thailand, like we're not getting ranch. Oh no, no. we're not getting ranch. You are not you're, getting you're ranch. You're so limited. So limited. Like you're not. And what are we gonna eat the whole time? You're gonna bring ranch in your suitcase. You actually. That's another no. good point. You can't travel. Exactly. Yeah. <gasps> so um, some comments here. Back in the day, I went out on some bad dates, but expecting an Eastern European style restaurant to have ranch dressing and nipping out to buy some would go down in the bad date hall of fame. Mm-hmm. Someone else said, yeah, you're the asshole. Did you even try to enjoy the food without the ranch? This is so gross to me. Mm. Why don't you just eat ranch since it seems that it's all you enjoy? Okay, uh, okay. don't be petty. Yeah. At a five star restaurant, I'll, have, I'll just have the chicken tendies. OP probably. <laughs> <laughs> um, and look, man, I love some chicken tendies. I was just about to say, at a good restaurant. Yum. I love chicken tendies. Mm. Um, but but also, come on. Yum. And at the very least, look, at the very least, just communicate this. Communicate this right off the bat. Don't get to a date and then leave your date. Also, don't leave your date alone Wait, to go somewhere. She didn't somewhere. tell him that she was going to get the ranch? She, she probably... maybe did, but I don't even like that anyways. Like, yeah. That's weird. It's weird. It's, uh, that's bad etiquette. Well, it's just like stubbornness. To not even try what they have is not really immersing yourself into the restaurant. Yeah. So that's a little bit disrespectful. And it's, it's like bringing you there. Very different if you're like, hey, I'm limited by my allergies. I'm limited by this. Yeah, I'm sure. By whatever. Sure. This is a very clear choice. Um, but anyways. Yeah. Moving on. Wow. Yeah. I'm fired up. I'm fired up too. Okay. Could have been a legend though. Like Could've been bringing a, a bottle of ranch into a restaurant. Like Buffalo at Wild face, Wings. At is face like, value, we I ran love it. out. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's Buffalo like, Wild Wings, you bring, uh, you're like, I have to bring my own hot sauce because your shit doesn't get hot enough. Oh, that would that's be, cool. That would be. Yeah. I, I don't a, mind uh, that. That's... I'd be like, I want to party with that person. Yeah. Because yeah. the mango habanero is spicy. I can only handle so much. <laughs> All right, next story. Uh, this was on Am I the Asshole and reposted to Am I the Devil, so buckle up. <gasps> 
Am I the asshole for telling my fiance that he embarrassed me when he started singing the happy birthday song to his five-year-old son at the restaurant? Okay. I, a 30-year-old woman, have been with my fiance, Ned, uh, who's 36, for Is a year and a half. <laughs> what? It's in quotes? Uh, yeah, it's a fake name. Oh, okay, great, great. Right, right, right. Great, great, great. Um, Thank God. All the names in all these stories are always <laughs> not real. Okay. Um, uh, they've been dating for a year and a half. He has a five-year-old son with his ex-girlfriend. They don't have a custody arrangement, but he has him most of the week because the mom is currently sick. His son is lovely, but I notice that Ned takes him everywhere he goes, including places that aren't child-friendly. We have issues with that, but we're working on it. His son's fifth birthday was days ago, and Ned took us out to a restaurant to celebrate. The place was nice, but looked a bit unfitting for the occasion because it was, some, it was a somewhat expensive place. Anyways, we ordered food, and when we got the birthday cake, which was a surprise to me because I thought we were going to celebrate at home where we could be free to sing and play however we wanted, I still had no issue with that until Ned started singing the happy birthday song to his son. I was so stunned I almost dropped my plate. He was singing it at the top of his lungs, not even looking around or paying attention to how many people were staring at us awkwardly. I felt so embarrassed I kept whispering for him to stop, but he ignored me. Of course my future stepson was hyped and a little too active, which isn't good when we're in a public place. I expected the staff, the manager, anyone to get involved and stop him, but no one did. In fact, some woman came up to us and offered to help him take a video recording. I wasn't in it at all. I froze in my seat looking stunned and a little angry. He looked at me later asking what was wrong. I didn't say anything except, thanks for finally noticing. He didn't understand what I meant and I didn't explain till we were in the car. I flat out told him that he embarrassed me the second he started singing in the restaurant. He looked shocked saying he didn't get why I would be embarrassed by him celebrating his son's birthday and cheering him up. I told him we could have done this at home where we would be more comfortable and free. He took it as me being ashamed of him and his son, but I, but I denied it and said that it just felt awkward and embarrassing to me at the restaurant and I've never been in this situation. He said that his son's mom is sick, that he's trying to do all he can to cheer him up, that, uh, that all families do that and that no one had an issue with it except for me. Then when I tried to explain, he got mad and said he no longer felt like talking. We haven't been speaking since then. It appears he's still salty about me saying what I said and insisting that I see him and his son as an embarrassment. Am I the asshole? I think he's being too harsh ignoring me instead of talking it out. Whoa, this, this it, so like, much. She, she just doesn't get, there's unspoken rules of social etiquette and I feel like the happy birthday song is allowed Almost anywhere. anywhere. It really does. Almost, almost anywhere, anytime. The son's mother is sick it, it, with I don't know what. Besides that, I have never. She is sick. I have never heard someone singing happy birthday and I've been like, how dare they? Yeah. What do they think they're doing? You guys and need here's to quiet the thing down. I feel like everyone universally kind of dreads the happy birthday song, but I also agree with what you're saying. It's also like, yeah, it's the- It is? It's a, and it's what a five-year-old's birthday. You gotta do it! Like, he's a cute little kid at a, probably a really nice restaurant. Everyone's like, oh, I have baby fever uh, now. I love how she's like, she's like, <laughs> no one no one said anything. Like, uh, in fact, a lady came up and offered to take a video. It's like, yeah, because they clearly didn't have a problem with it. It sounds like a sketch where she's probably like, stop, stop, <laughs> stop. Like, happy birthday. birthday. And the son's like, yay, because mommy's sick. And, and everyone like, everyone around is like singing to it. She's like, they're joining in because they're embarrassed. I'm thinking of like the internal monologue where it's like everything goes dark behind her. She's like, no, not again. <laughs> this can't be. She sounds extremely controlling because it's like the fact where she's like, why didn't he do it at home where we can be free? It's like, you mean where you can be free? Ma yeah. And maybe maybe this is how she's grown up. Like we should, her, her, sure. they were just like, we never sing in public. <laughs> we never like sing the happy birthday. Like we do it, we wait till we get home and that's where we And celebrate. you have to acknowledge that that's you. Sure. Yeah. And your upbringing. You're projecting it on other people. Yeah. It, I would get it if she's like, don't sing happy birthday to me in a public place. Yeah. That's all, that, I would, I would totally understand a little bit more if she was like, hey, I was embarrassed. Like, I don't like to be put on the spot at that restaurant. It's him and his son. Let him raise his son the way he wants and, and celebrate his son's birthday the way he wants. Also, I also, yeah. I also think it's more than that. It sounds to me like she did not realize that she signed up for the son to be in her life all the time. Did you hear it? She was like, and he brings the son around everywhere we go. It's like, yeah, it's his son, son. and he's five years also, old. Also, you've only been together a year and a half and you're already fianced. Yeah. Which is fine, fianced. no judgment, but like that's not a lot of time to really like. Establish a connection with him. Him and, and the son. And the son. And, and it seems like she hasn't. 
No. Based on this, only on this, it doesn't appear. Well, there's probably only been one birthday before this. And in fact, yeah. if it's a year and a half, there's it's only been one birthday one before birthday this. One birthday, and he was, yeah, so, um, probably at the house singing quietly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and also, just, just for the record, it takes about 10 seconds to sing the birthday song. So quick. Correct. It is very quick. And let's go back to, this is not a restaurant fit for child because it's expensive. Uh, excuse you? I, I know. You're right, children don't deserve expensive food. What? Yes. No. Yes, they do. Yes, they absolutely do. I mean, I would say they, they, it's totally, sometimes it's they totally don't, fine. But... Some children don't. You're it's right. completely fine. I will say, five-year-old me, take me to Chili's. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. I, I just take me to Chili's. But maybe this was Chili's. Twenty-two-year-old me, take me to Chili's. <laughs> take me to Chili's. I never stop going to Chili's because it's so good. It's so it's, good. I don't care. What's your it Chili's is... order? Yeah, we love to say that. Well. Chocolate molten cake, oh, always at okay. the end. That's it. <laughs> that's it. You're a chicken crisp. Fajitas, boy. fajitas. You do the fajitas. I love. That's crazy. You're um, out of your mind. Comments here. It's not embarrassing to sing happy birthday to a child. It is, however, super embarrassing to look pissed off at a person singing happy birthday to a child at the same table as you. You're the asshole. Someone else said, you're the asshole. If it, if it had actually been an issue, the staff would have intervened. They didn't. Given that the only actual response you got from anyone was unequivocally supportive, I think you're wildly projecting your own embarrassment at having attention called to you in public. And you need to acknowledge that as your problem instead of taking it out on your partner. Whoa, this person was like, Damn. I'm going to yeah. respond. <laughs> uh, you're the asshole. I understand your concern. Strangers might think you cared about your stepson with a public act like that. <laughs> Um, <laughs> holy oh. shit, man. Happy birthday. Yeah, the fact that she was trying to whisper to him while he's singing it. I know. Crazy. Unwritten you. rule. You're allowed to do happy birthday. Everyone's allowed to get involved. Yeah. It's just what it is. It and really the fact does that get a it pass. didn't, she was still, she wasn't disillusioned when the woman came over and was like, I'll take a video of you. Like, it's clearly okay that they were doing that from an outside party. Yeah, she yeah. still was like, this is wrong. I almost dropped my plate. Yeah. Well, why are you holding your plate Why up? was your plate this in your hands in the first place? <laughs> You're the weird one. She's like this, I almost dropped my plate. Yeah, ridiculous. Next story here. Another one that was reposted onto Am I the Devil. <gasps> Let's see if this person's worse than the... Oh, I love these. <laughs> I'm getting excited. <laughs> Am I the asshole for inviting my waitress out on a date? You know how many times that's happened? I, and you know what? I have gone on dates. Same. From the restaurant. Yep. Someone followed me into a service station to ask me out. Oh, that's scary. Well, we went out for like four months. It was really fun, actually. <laughs> okay. I thought he was cute. Yeah, but that's not a good... You're right. Don't do that. Yeah. I've had 25. a couple times where <laughs> I've had a couple times where I left them my number and they left me no, their number at the same time. Isn't that cute? Synced up. Synced up. Anyways, sorry. We have a lot of stories about this. <laughs> All right. This is a 46-year-old man. Uh, my wife, uh, who was 43, passed away about two years ago. Mm -hmm. Since then, I haven't had the courage or the desire to try and date. My kids are all in college, so I try to go out for dinner by myself once a week to get out of the house. When I got to the restaurant, I glanced at the menu. When my waitress showed up, I was immediately struck by how much she looked like my past wife. Oh. I ordered my food, and I worked up the nerve when she came back to give it to me to ask her out to dinner. She laughed and said she would think about it and left. I felt good about asking until I was done eating and a different waiter came by to take payment. I asked him what happened to the previous waitress, and he told me that she didn't feel comfortable serving me anymore and asked him to clear her table for her. I felt so embarrassed after putting myself out there and getting rejected like that. I thought it would have been okay, and it would have been better just to have heard a simple no from her. Was I, a, was I the asshole for asking her out? Here, here's what it is. She's working. Yeah. It's true. She is employed. She is on the clock. She it's is true. working. It is her job to be friendly yep. and joyful. She is working. However, I don't, I do think that, a, uh, it's hard. It's hard with different people. I would say, I would say, based on the context he gave us, there was no, there was no sign uh, other than just like, you look like my, my passed away wife. I would say for me, baseline, yeah, if someone's working, it, you're an asshole for doing it, even if it works. Even if it works out and it's a story where you could be like, yeah, I definitely broke what I would say is an etiquette 
For and sure. ask them out while they're working. Um, and at the very least, he, he, you can't be upset by however you're nope. rejected. Nope. That, that's like, not your right. That's, like, that's like, not your right. If, if, I, if, if, if a different waiter, if I did this and I decided, hey, I'm going to ask this, this person out, um, which what I mean is I, I would need to know. I would need more than yep. just like, I'm getting a vibe. I'd be, it need to be like, hey, we're having a full on conversation. You want to know his other faux pas? What? He didn't wait till the end of the I meal. was just going to say that. Oh. You, you cannot ask out a, a waitress while they're serving your table currently. It is awkward. It is weird. It changes the dynamic. Yep. If you want to ask them out, leave them your number on a thing. I don't think that that's wrong. Yeah. No, no, not at all. I uh, think leaving the number. And even at the end of the meal, the, we are done. Our transaction is finished. We right. are paid. I have signed. Also, yes, you have to wait till the end of the day. The thing. But yes. yes, we are working. He asked her out before they were done, which means now she's like, okay, how am I going to get a tip if, if I reject him? That's this sucks. This is now such a loaded situation. That's so uncomfortable for her. Yeah. I do not think he was thinking. That's and why this she is, said maybe. That's this why is also why it, it sucks, too, because I know for myself as a server, I'm a flirt. I'm going to flirt to get that tip. And I'm gonna be pretty too to get that tip. <laughs> like, and so, and a lot of people are like, "Oh, he's flirting with me." I'm like, "Yeah, I'm flirting with you. It's kind of, kind of my whole thing. Like, that's how I'm gonna get." You're working. I'm working. I think leaving the number is the only version of it that I'm like, okay, fine. You leave a number, and you're saying it's, it's like, hey, pressure's off. If I don't receive a call from you, fine. Pressure's and, off. But, but I, I think. I think that's the only version of it where I'm not like, hey, you're being a little bit of an asshole. But uh, where you're absolutely an really? asshole, and this is across the circumstances, uh, is, mm -hmm. and I mean asshole not in like, you're a bad person. Uh -huh. I just mean like, you're, you know, uh, you might, out of you, pocket. If you, ask, if you ask someone out while they're working, you might make them uncomfortable. Yeah. And that makes, that yeah. might make you an asshole. I'm not saying like, fuck you, but it's, Hey, you okay. have to really be certain. Yeah. And where you're absolutely an asshole no matter what is if someone rejects you however they do and you, and you push back them. even the slightest bit, you're you're a hundred percent asshole. I think I agree with that. I do think it gets fing complicated because I do think in like rom coms, TV shows, like all these things, it's always like, you know, the waitress or the server and like that's how you meet. I don't think it's right to ask out someone while they're working, but I think it gets really complicated. I have a question. What if the roles were flipped? What if what it if was a girl oh, asking? Oh, no, 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 no. What if the server is asking the customer out at the end of the meal? I think, but I think I, we were talking about like the woman and the man, and like straight up, I think the issue is that so many straight dudes are so dangerous out there that That's so they, true. they're the ones who it up. Yeah. Like we can it's only be so mad true. at them. They're, we can only be mad at them. I mean, we just had a story earlier of someone stalking. Someone like they, they make it scary. That's the problem. They make it yeah. scary. Where, that's, where the, that's the issue. Sometimes I feel like it's I, I want to believe that it's not all scary because I don't want to live. I don't want to live my life being scared all the time. No. So it's like I'm going to be more open to this. But that's just my personal experience. So I, that's why I think it gets really tricky. tricky. That's the thing you have to acknowledge as a man. In any situation where you're like, oh, I, I think this woman's really cute. I want to ask her out. But you have to be like, she doesn't know me. So there is, based on statistics, yeah. a Fair high enough. chance that I'm a dangerous person. Yeah. And I mean her hard. Yeah. Right. You have to consider that. That's and you true. have to, you know, you know, oh, my intentions are good, though. Yeah, you know that. She doesn't. See? And that's the. And, and she and has reason to believe the exact opposite. That's and why. that's why I say, like, you're an asshole based on these things. Because mm. it's like, you're now maybe making this date this person's day harder. Yeah. I agree. And just write your write your number down later and then leave. Yes. That's the thing. Don't sit there and wait. Like if leave. they want to text you, they, they will text will. you. I can't stand when there's dudes who are creepy as F who are just like yeah. saying, Oh, you're beautiful, or oh, you look like my dead ex-wife. Yeah. Oh my God. It's like, okay, 100%. cool. Hey Chance, can you take over my entire section absolutely the now thing, i can't be in the that thing section. i've heard and we'll get into these comments is we can split the tips though <laughs> the thing i've heard and i feel like the the best thing you can do whenever asking someone out is how do you make them feel like as safe as possible and that they can walk away from this and get away from this super easily and that's the best write your number down write a number down and be gone be gone um so comments here 
You're the asshole. Do not proposition women who cannot leave if they choose. This means any woman who is in a workplace in which you are the customer. It means any place where a woman cannot physically step away from you if they choose. Um, someone said, very, very soft, you're the asshole. You shouldn't be discouraged by, um, from getting out and opening your heart to potential partners. But I can see how the situation may have been awkward for the waitress. I'm sorry for your loss, OP. Someone said, you're the asshole. If you want to ask a waitress out, leave your number on the receipt. Way less awkward and puts her in control without having uh, to feel pressured by your presence. Yes. If she's interested, cool. If not, Big Jerry working the grill will probably text you and with you. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I agree with those. Big and I, Jerry. And that's what I, Big Jerry. That's what I mean. It's like, it's, and especially this guy, I'm like, you weren't, you didn't have bad intentions. You just went about this bad. But also, did he really like her? Or did he just look like a dead ex? That's also wife? a little weird thing. That's like, also if some you started psychic dating, damage right there. If you started yeah. dating, if it did work out, and you started dating, it's like, yeah, here's a picture of my ex wife that you look just like. It's, it's, it's Put not, on this dress. This might have been the best case scenario. Dress. I think this was it's best perfect. case scenario for that guy. How many times do you think you got asked out while you were working? A lot. That's I, how Tim Robbins asked me out. That's, yeah. But he, that story. but he literally, he was leaving. Yeah. And his son was leaving too. Yeah, that's, and that's fair. And I, they wrote their, they literally wrote their number down on a receipt and left. Yeah. And it was a private party and I didn't feel like it was creepy or anything, but I feel like I got asked out a lot. But the thing is, is like, I don't know. It was when I first moved here and I was single at the time and I don't know. It, it wasn't, I don't know. When you work in the restaurant industry for a really long time, you are so used to yeah. creeps yeah. and not the creeps. And you can distinguish them in a heartbeat. Yeah. Yeah. You see them and you're like, creep. Yeah, not creep. Hundred percent. And so I was the very second. like open to if I didn't feel creepy vibes and they left their number, cool. Yeah. But there were many times so many. that I got asked out that was creepy and weird, and I had to give up my section many times. Damn. It just became part of the job. I know that yeah. sounds fucking crazy. No, but it, it became is. part of what I had to set myself up for. And it sucks that it's it's a reality. It's unfair. It's stupid. It's it's shitty. But yeah, it's but you have reality. to adapt because yeah. I, I growing up from Boston, I cannot. I don't want to be afraid every day. I don't want to be angry every day. Every time I get beeped up, I don't want to be pissed. So I, Amanda, needed to adapt, and so I just added it into my schedule. I know that sounds crazy, no, I mean, but I added it into my schedule. I'm like, all right, which fucker am I gonna deal with today? Right. And which person is gonna ask me out that maybe I'm in? like, you have. I, for me, I had to adapt because I want to be happy and I don't yeah. want other people who are f***ing creeps to distinguish my day, to like yeah. change my whole day. You learn com well, it, also with the creep, not just with creeps, but just like assholes in general. Assholes. You learn to compartmentalize. You're yeah, like, you can't like, let this table affect the I'm rest of my- I'm having a good day and I look um, good yeah. today. Yeah. I'm not gonna let you, f like, like I've had a person slap my ass while they went to the bathroom. I, like, yes, has it yeah. hurt my, my day, but I'm like, I can't keep letting that shit hurt my day. What's so weird is that nowhere else, I've worked in restaurants for my whole life in Tennessee and Chicago and LA and different places in LA Wild. and different places too. Yeah. And nowhere, never got hit on or like asked out anywhere besides when I moved here. I guess there's just more gay people here also. Yeah. But like it changed everything and then all of a sudden like you're getting your ass pinched while you walk by and all yep. this stuff and I'm like, what the f but then you get hit on by the people you want to get hit on, and you're like, okay, well now it's kind of weird. Yeah, so you kind of like, yeah. you're like, oh, oh. Yeah, and so it really confuses other people too, because what's happening is your section's really close together, and this table, it's this really <laughs> hot guy that you are flirting with, yeah, and like you're doing stuff, and like you're, and you're like, hello. You're like, okay, so what can I get? You guys want dessert? And the guy's you want like, free dessert? come here, little boy. And then the table next to you is the creeps that hear this, and they're like, we want free dessert. I'm like, no, it's not for you. <laughs> it's for them. <laughs> that is a perfect description of Cartman. Com compartmentalizing. compartmentalizing is your section. It's literally like, creep, creep, cool, <gasps> fun people, yeah. hot. Yeah. Creep, 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 that's good. cool, fun people, hot. Yeah, that's and you're so just true. like, well, damn. <laughs> yeah. Um, true stories. Yeah. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by NordVPN. As you probably noticed with these Reddit stories, there is all sorts of crazy stuff out there on the internet. But NordVPN is here to protect you from the most basic kinds of cybersecurity attacks. 
and using NordVPN, they can encrypt your online traffic anytime you're using public Wi-Fi networks to make sure that you're safe. And you can have peace of mind because they have threat protection, which can recognize any sort of malicious links or dangerous websites. And it can even scan documents uh, while you're downloading them to recognize any malware attempts. It's awesome, especially for people like me. I don't know what I'm doing online, so I love it. If you're interested in a safer browsing experience, give NordVPN a try. And we, right now, have an exclusive deal just for our viewers. You can grab this exclusive NordVPN deal at nordvpn.com slash pitreddit for extra subscription time. Try it risk-free for 30 days, money-back guarantee. Once again, that's nordvpn.com slash pitreddit for extra subscription time. Thanks again to NordVPN for sponsoring this episode. Let's move on. Let's move on. All right. Am I the asshole for bringing my sister-in-law's wallet to the restaurant when she conveniently always forgets it? <laughs> oh, I relate to this. All right, all right, all right. This might be our legend. Uh, this. Oh, this wallet? Yes! Your yes! Honor, my sister-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> In the <a> top hat. <laughs> yeah. Okay, this 28 year old woman, okay. her sister in law, Amy, who's 26, always comes to visit from out of town. She stays with us instead of a hotel and always wants to go to expensive restaurants. She always conveniently forgets her wallet or comes up with some excuse as to why she can't pay her share. She has implied that since I make much more money than her, I should be the one to pay. No, not that my husband should pay, but me specifically. I do make a fair amount of money, but not so much that I can treat someone every time they come into town. Nonetheless, in the past, I have just paid the bill and asked her to pay me back. She never has. She made a reservation at an extremely expensive restaurant last night, and before we left, I made it clear that I wouldn't be paying her bill. This is where I might be the asshole. And I'll admit, I got this move straight from an episode of Two and a Half Men. Oh, awesome. Oh my God. I love it. You don't like it? I love it. Uh-uh. As we were leaving, my husband and her and her went to the car. I pretended I forgot something and went back inside. I found her wallet sitting right on top of her suitcase. I put it in my purse and we went to the restaurant. When we were done eating, I asked for separate bills. She said, no, we need one bill because she forgot her wallet again. I reached my purse and said, this wallet? She was extremely furious. She said that I should not have touched or grabbed her wallet. So am I the asshole for taking her wallet and bringing it to the restaurant? Wait! A edit. Oh. <laughs> Amy just called me. She saw this post and she yelled at me for bad mouthing her on the internet. Honestly, I don't care. Amy, hopefully reading all these comments is a wake up call for you. Whoa! Whoa! She just made it real awkward. Mad yeah. awkward. She made it real awkward. I she feel said, bad for her husband. She said the price <laughs> of this relationship is right here. Yeah. Her husband's just like, can you guys just get along? <laughs> 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 um, not the asshole, but I would have probably done it differently because it's gonna, I would have been like, hey, I would have had a conversation. I would have been like, before we left, when we're getting in the car, Is if you know, your, yeah. be like, you have everything, keys, phone, wallet? Wallet? Oh wait, you don't know, oh you forgot your wallet? Here, let's go she probably check would have the been car. Like, yeah. Well, she probably would have been like, yeah. Like, cause you always forget your wallet. Yeah. Okay, you, you can Venmo me. I'll, re I'll Venmo request That's you. That's also a thing too. But bringing the wa she must have just been. Out I just also would be like, we're not going to an expensive restaurant. She said, she, how many times did yeah. she say that it has happened? Though she said it's happened so many times. So Every many time. times, and that the sister-in-law made the reservation at the expensive yeah. restaurant. I'd be like, no, we're not. We're not going. Yeah, I don't we're think done she's with the this. asshole. Wait. Oh, why I said wait. Who paid for it? What happened? Oh yeah. So it sounds like based on the comments here that the sister-in-law still didn't pay because she was mad. This is one of those situations where I'm like, why do you keep letting this person do this? Also, the husband needs to get involved. That's his sister. No. Oh, it's his sister. It's his You're sister. right. Sister. Yeah, it, it, he's just kind of there. Like, get involved. You know? Yeah, not the husband paying, me specifically paying. Also, they should have come to it together. Maybe the husband and the wife should have been like, I'm getting, I mean, she probably just, but maybe if they both were like, here's your wallet, we we found it, we brought it for you, like if they were gonna do that. I do think bringing the wallet is kind of like, ugh, like. Look, she she had to, she fought fire with fire there, but, but it's also weird that the sister-in-law is making her pay. She said she's not, not asking yeah, the- Yeah, that's the, what I was saying, not the that's brother. A, it's some weird shit. This is a weird person. Based on this story, I don't like them. 
This sounds like a bigger issue with the husband and his and his sister. And yeah. I feel like the sister-in-law, the husband needs to set some fucking boundaries there because the sister the 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 wife should not she should not be in charge of taking care of the sister-in-law like that. Also, oh, this wallet is the wrong line. <laughs> that is the wrong uh, What is the right line? line? The right line is Oh my God, I actually grabbed it for you. So true. I, I saw it on your suitcase and I grabbed it. Oh yeah, oh it was just sitting out on your suitcase in the car and I didn't want it to get stolen. Here it is. Or you could have before you Bing. went to the restaurant been like, uh, hey I need to go do the, hey hey, I saw your wallet still on your suitcase. You wanna go grab it really quickly? You wanna go grab yeah, it? Yeah, go, go grab it, we'll go together. Let's hold hands and go there. Hmm. Um, comments here, not the asshole, definitely not an asshole, but you might be a legend. <laughs> Not uh, the asshole if she's actually, if she'd actually forgotten her wallet, she would have been grateful you remembered. Of course we all know she never forgot it. Uh, you're already saving her hotel costs by allowing her to stay in your home. The least she should be doing is treating you to a meal out uh, to thank you for hosting her. Yes. Not the asshole, and I love uh, it. Not how I operate when people come visit I, me. I, I'm, for I'm, I'm, I, same. Honestly, same. I, I have luckily never, we've had a lot of stories like this of people kind of like making other people pay the bill. I've never dealt with it. Um, I've, I guess I've never gone to dinner with two big of assholes because I, I feel like yeah. splitting the bill has never been an argument no. whenever I've gone out. No, and especially it's never. With, especially That's with, what I'm talking about. Well, especially with Venmo now like and stuff like that. It's so easy. Well, I think if you go with people who's been in the service industry, you don't make it a yeah. thing because you're like, we are not oh. splitting this 17 ways. I, uh, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm a giver and I will... Most of the time, if people are visiting me, I'm gonna pay the bill before you even see the bill. Correct. The waiter already has the card. And that's my expectation. I don't expect you to pay. And when I'm visiting, I don't expect you to pay for me. I agree uh, complete. And if your mother is visiting, I am taking care. Oh, absolutely. My husband and I are taking care of the bill. Absolutely. Even if she gets pissed. Yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, I am of the mindset whenever I go like out to dinner with people that I'm like, I, I need to prepare to be responsible for myself, uh, like, like no matter what. Yeah, and I just, 100%. I just need to be in that mindset, and I can be pleasantly surprised if someone's like, hey, I got this. Yeah, but do not go with that expectation. That is how you're going to ruin friendships. I, you will ruin, you will ruin relationships with that mindset. Correct. And you are going to be so much happier if you're prepared. If you're prepared to do the whole bill. And I'm not super well off. I'm not like I'm not like rolling yeah, yeah, in dough. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it'll, it, sometimes it'll like put me out. Maybe I don't know how many people are at this dinner. Just be prepared. That worst case scenario, I'm gonna have to cover the bill. Or or if you feel because I do not want to be in a situation where we can't cover the bill. Where it's so like, like I only got a nice tea. Yeah. I mean I understand that. But I get it too. Oof. But I'm just well, or, ready or to do it in tricky. just in case. If you have that save so many relationships. Mm -hmm. If you have that mindset, you can then communicate beforehand of like, hey, I can't afford to go to this place. Boom. And then it's like, hey, oh, we'll figure it out. Boom. Then it's like you've communicated it. It's but it's waiting till the bill to then go, well, I was expecting you to get it. She's mm -hmm. clearly very Bullshit. manipulative and she clearly feels she's using her brother and uh, sister-in-law as like mommy daddy right now. Like she's put them in that role. Yeah. And it's th that honestly, it's up to the brother to set a freaking boundary. Communication. But if he can't, then then it's up to unfortunately the wife to set yeah. a boundary and be like, I'm so sorry, you can't stay with us right now. Yeah. You have to get a hotel room. To go back on my what I just said, she said she is not paying for the meal before the meal started. She, she established it. She established that and she was like, you still want to go. You made this reservation and I am not paying for it. No, yeah, this person uh, full on. That's fucked up. up. All right, next story. Okay, I am hot. I'm hot too. <laughs> am I the asshole for leaving itemized tips to compensate for my wife's behavior? What? <laughs> okay. My wife and I, in our 30s, dine out every once in a while, but not too often because of my wife's annoying habit inherited from her family. Oh. 
She always complains, sends food back if it's not absolutely oh. perfect, and makes needless requests slash substitutions. She doesn't have allergies or sensitivities. It can easily take five minutes for her just to order her own food. And sometimes I've already finished my meal by the time she gets her food because she sends it back, asks for modifications, etc. I know restaurant staff don't appreciate it. I've tried talking to her about this, but she doesn't see an issue with it. Anyway, we make decent money and we use our combined fun, fun funds on date slash dinners. I recently started writing writing what my wife does on the receipt and then calculating a tip in addition to the normal gratuity to compensate. So to a receipt, I might add, complained about not having blank beverage, plus $5. Asked five questions about a single menu item, plus $5. Asked for a new drink because too much ice, plus $5. Sent meal back was exactly what she ordered, plus $5. She... She didn't notice me doing it the first two to three times, but last night she noticed I was spending a lot of time on writing a tip amount and asked why. I showed her what I wrote. She's been mad at me since, saying I'm embarrassing her to the staff. I told her she's embarrassing us both. Am I the asshole? Petty, maybe, but an asshole? Edit. My wife is otherwise a very nice, caring, and generous person. Oh. She does always say please and thank you, uh, even for her most absurd request. <laughs> Annoying each other like this is our love language, but this time she's pretty mad. Ooh. Oops. Um, it's tough because he's stay saying, mad. He's it, it, you know who else is mad? All the servers that you're fing with. They have a yeah. system. Uh, I, come it, in there and it up. One it's, shot. It's a little bit of like please and thank you doesn't excuse. No. Shit. Too much ice, please, thank you. Well, it's just, it's also, I would be mad too because I would be embarrassed because I would see in written form, Yes. oh, this is what I'm doing. I'm upset, but not at you. I'm upset at myself because now I have written text of what I've done. But you're a healthy person. I wonder though, well we don't have context of- I don't think of, that's what she's thinking. No, I think that is what she's thinking, but she don't, I don't think she's really thought about what she's thinking. Well we don't have context. I don't think she can, do you know yeah. what I mean? Like she's thinking yeah. it and she's acting out, but she's not, she's not like looking inwardly and being yeah. like, why am not I reflecting. actually mad? What's actually making me mad right now? What we, what we don't have context on is whether or not he has tried to communicate with her about that. That's what I was wondering, because if he, he hasn't said he communicated- had. Has he? Yeah, he said he did. Uh, he said we've talked I've, about it oh, before. Oh, you're right, you're right. Sorry, I take that back. So oh. he did, he established, I've tried talking to her about this, but she doesn't see an issue with it. So he has tried. And, and, and now he's just like, Fuck it. Yeah, like I'll pay for it. Did he just show her the things that he wrote down? How did that happen? No, yeah, she, she goes, she goes, what? She saw because he was taking a really long time. She's like, why are you taking so long on your tip thing, right? And I showed her what I wrote. Um, I saying, she, she's been mad at me since saying I'm embarrassing her to the staff. I told her she's embarrassing, embarrassing us both. Yeah, she said, you're embarrassing me to the staff. It's like, no. You already did that. You, that's I don't, already been done. I don't think compensating for what's already done. I don't think it's the asshole because they're married. They have their own love language. Mm. They have their own back and forth. And to be honest, if you've if he's already tried to communicate it with her, and this is like another way that he's trying to enjoy going out to dinner. Well, whatever. What? Okay. What's happening here? I just thought about something. What? He should have just put the extra tip in. He shouldn't be writing the reason. The, the, the no, I think that is pretty fucked a little bit. Yeah, it is fucked that he's writing the reason. It is a little reason. fucked, but and also- it's kind, of, it's kind of an inside joke between him and the staff. It is, and it's an inside joke. If he's not showing her every time, he's like, it's an inside joke between me and the staff showing I'm cool, she's the problem. Yeah, he said, he said annoying each other like this is our love language, but he wasn't- What does that mean? But he, he wasn't, wasn't showing her. He wasn't showing her. This was a secret to her. Oh, this is a secret right. to him and oh, the staff. Then it is. It's like, I'm the cool one, I promise. I'm paying for the check. Oh, I'm, that I, is, that's like sorry, being like, she's such a I'm bitch. so sorry about my bitch wife. Yes, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, it's one of those things, and I mean, I'm not a marriage counselor or an expert in any sort of sense, but stuff like this, I'm like, you're telling me this isn't gonna turn into resentment at some point in your marriage? Yeah. Like, bro, uh, I mean, it, it's a, but also I think she needs to acknowledge, like, whether she is fine with doing it or not, she needs to acknowledge, like, it is embarrassing. Like, you are making the, the staff stay harder. And you are not in control. You going to a, to restaurant, a restaurant, you are, you are not no longer in control. In control. Yeah. Someone Let else is in the kitchen 
cooking your meal. Let the someone restaurant take over. Someone else is going to bring it to you, and someone else is going to do your dishes. That's yeah. the thing. Let the restaurant take over. Yes. Let them serve you how they curated yes. the menu. It let is purposeful. Serve... There's been a lot of thought. They have been so much thought. Like, I, I, I... Take, let enjoy the experience. I, if I was a husband, I would have been like, I'm not going out to dinner with you. I'm so sorry, but I need to take a break from going out to dinner because I'm not enjoying myself. And and she doesn't have allergies or sensitivities, so let's establish that. Like this is just her preferences. I I look, maybe I'm the asshole for this, but if I was at a restaurant and someone sent a drink back because it had too much ice, I think I'd probably look them in the face and go fuck go fuck yourself. There's just no there is no explanation for this other than this is something she does. So that's what it and sounds. A specific something she does specifically at, at restaurants. restaurants. This is not a behavior Which that it could be catered to restaurants. I guess it was yeah. a normalized thing for her growing up. But it, it, and that's and it's once again, if she wants to say, "Hey, I'm gonna do this. This is how I am. This is how I eat," but she needs to also acknowledge, "Yeah, I am making the waiter's day harder. I can't deny that. Not aspect. only the waiter." But not only the waiter, there's cooks, there's the food system. runners, there's expos, there's now now this ticket that this menu, this item that has gone out has thousands of times everything. has all of these modifications on it. So now this guy is standing with this ticket who didn't ring it in, who a expo. server ring it in. Expo is gonna have to read this to the cooks. A lot of the times they speak different languages and like there's mm -hmm. little modifications that they don't mm -hmm. understand. Like it doesn't doesn't translate well. Uh -huh. So now I have to explain how to do this dish that they've done a thousand times to, that makes sense to them while they have 26 and it other up tickets. Every other table, because this food's getting cold, this food's getting cold, yep. this guy's getting pissed. Now this server's having a bad day. Now he's gonna be in a have an attitude towards the other tables. Cocktails are sitting and waiting. Everything is like a web. Yeah. Right? I, yeah, I, yeah, I think it's like, it, oh. I get frustrated. <laughs> I just got so easy. I'm so pissed. Because I know there's people that go, well, I, I need food a certain way and I, I have my preferences, but I'm like, don't I, go I think, out to a but, restaurant. But I think when you're at a there restaurant, there are also places. I, I think when you're at a restaurant, you kind of have to let go a little bit of the I. Like, you are at a place where you are, uh, you are affecting a lot of people's day yep. and week. You have to let go of 80% of your control at a restaurant. Do not go out to a restaurant if you're not down for the experience. I'm well, that, sorry. There are places that you can go. Sure. And there uh, are also places that like you ser like not serve yourself, but there are places that you can cater your own whatever you need. Correct. You can do it. And there are restaurants that and there are certain modifications that are, they are like, we can do this. So open to it. We right. can do these so things. So go to those restaurants. We have a lot of options available to you. Yeah. Gluten free, vegan, you don't want food touching. We can do that, we can do that. Yeah. yeah. But like when you start getting into it, if we're, if the restaurant is like, we can't do this, or like it's not an option that is on the menu for you. Right. It's gonna, it doesn't work. I doesn't agree. Work. Okay. Eat it. Um, Cause it just slows down every, it makes yeah. everyone's life so much worse. So we have some comments here. Not the asshole. That must be mortifying. Let's have your wife work as a waitress in one of the restaurants you both frequent. Let's see how fast her behavior changes. <laughs> Someone else said, not the asshole. Please continue <laughs> doing this until she isn't a nightmare to wait staff. Saying please and thank you doesn't mean jack shit if you're making problems that aren't there in order to feel satisfied or whatever her motivation is for being this way. A new comment. Everyone sucks here. Your wife sucks, but you do too because you treat it like throwing money at the problem will make it okay. At restaurants, you pay money for food, drinks, and service. Insulting and, and degrading the staff is not on the menu. How would you feel if I slapped you in the face but then gave okay. you $5 and said it wasn't that bad because I was nice about it? Money okay. does not entitle you to hurt others. Um, but money's, okay, great. <laughs> Thank you so much. Wait, I also have to say, I'm going back to the modifications again. A lot of the times, People don't realize that the food has already been prepped hours before. We can, it is already, it is, it is slated to serve a thousand people that night. Like we have, we have a, a, this dill sauce that yeah. we have already made. We cannot take out the dill. It is in the sauce. I know. Or like, wait, I'm allergic to this. Can you take this off? No, it's already pre, it's already, the onions are already balsamic. Like, they are already roasted in balsamic dressing. They are in a vat that we can heat up. They just got made hours before, but we can't make another vat just for you. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's not how this works. I agree. Um, have you guys ever left extra tips based on like, have you ever been out to dinner with someone who was really embarrassing and you left like an extra tip? Always. <laughs> really? Always. No, 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 I'm saying like, have you ever been in a situation like this where you're out to dinner and someone you were dining with 
was kind of shitty to the wait staff, so you were like, I'm gonna add. I'm like, if that ever happened, I If always... that happened, of course, but okay. I'm like, oh, has it happened? It, yeah, I have. It, it. <sighs> with big part, with like a big group. Big it's I'm happened. Like, I'm sorry that we were so rambunctious and. It's Here's... it's happened to me with a, a new friend. I remember it was very small. We were getting like coffee and something. And she was being so specific about her latte and she like got it redone <laughs> twice. Oh. And I in front of her was like, I'm so sorry. And she let me have it. She was like, how dare you? How dare you make me feel bad? Like make me feel embarrassed. So that was that's, that's years hard. ago. And I was You've like, never done it since. whoa, I haven't done it sin since and so I won't verbally say it. I'm just very cautious Ooh, about yeah. it. I would never apologize on someone's behalf, not that that. And I did, I did, and that yeah. was a big lesson for me. So it's tricky with the tip thing. I think if we're a group and I'm with my friends and we've been loud, we've been asking for a lot of things, fuck yeah, I'll leave a bigger tip. Yeah, and I, I, I have friends, uh, you know, I know people with food sensitivities or situations mm -hmm. where they would maybe maybe do something like this, but I totally understand, and and the way they go about it is is so respectful and different. But uh, I'm I'm typically very wary and uh, cautious of controlling people, and so and I controlling people typically give that kind of response. So if I'm around someone who exhibits that kind of behavior, I usually just try to remove myself and and remove myself as far away from that type. Of I thing. now so. will try to do that because I've definitely been burned. Because they eventually they they go from controlling the stuff around them to trying to control you. Yes, and it typically happens. My husband is. Sir, bartender, bar manager. I, in our relationship, we 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 sit at the bar. He is watching the bar. He's watching how things are prepared. Sometimes he's like, "Oh, I love how they do that. Oh, what's that? Mm, that's not clean or whatever." And and I, I used to get so frustrated about it because I used to not be calm. But now I'm like, this is something he enjoys. Yeah. This is something he loves. When I go see a show, like a comedy show. You best believe I'm fucking sitting there thinking about all that shit. Yeah. So I'm like, because I love him and now understand the root of it, yeah. I, I I get it. But I will say still as a server, sometimes I can't turn it off. No, I I stack all the plates at the end. Oh, of I'm like all the plates, they're like, wow, thank you. I'm like, but mm -hmm. here's the thing with servers, when we come into the restaurant, and m me and my mom, my mom famously server, yes. Pancake Pantry. Yes. Uh, when we go to a restaurant, we are your best friend, your greatest ally, or your worst nightmare, because we are so yes. unforgiving to, maybe not maybe not bad server, we see, we can see your section, we see what's going on, we see the kitchen yeah. most of the time, we know what's going on, so we know if you're just doing a bad job. Yeah. And then we're like, damn. Yeah. We're still gonna we're still gonna tip at least 20%. Of course, always. always. But we're not we're, like the the back and forth is not we're not gonna be your friends. I anymore. agree. We're gonna be Wait, very hear me out. What? Do you are you the type of people that go, we're servers? Uh, if they're doing a bad job. Oof, I don't. I don't drop that oh. ever because when I used to serve. People that go, we're servers too, and I'm like, mm. mm, -mm. When that, mm. When, and if you said that, I'd go, thank you for your service. <laughs> thank you for your service. Well, sometimes those are uh, the nightmare tables. Those sometimes, uh, sometimes those. But are I understand tables. what you're saying. Yeah, I'm like, you're like, I know you're, I know you're just f***ing up. Yeah. Bad. Yeah. Because I can see your section. Yeah. And all of it has the plates They're at the so, end of the table. They're so, it's so dirty, dirty section, dir dirty, dirty section, dirty, are dirty the mind. Worst. <laughs> so yeah, take us out to dinner. But really, like, I'm great most at of the time, restaurant. I'm like, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna banter with you. Like, it's gonna be, I'm gonna be a great table. I'm gonna be really easy. Correct. If there are modifications, I'll ask, and I'll be like, I actually don't, I really don't like truffle oil. Is there any way that truffle oil cannot be on it? They're like, no, it's an okay. They're like, they're, yeah, that's an easy fix. Great. I love awesome. it. All right, here's the update. Alrighty, friends, we've had our laughs and shared our perspectives. Since my wife frequents this subreddit, I went ahead and showed her this post. With that said, I'd like to address a few things. First, she and I both know that any posts on this sub are peepholes into people's lives and characters, not display cases. Yes, my wife's behavior when dining out is bad, which is why I tried to think of a way to point it out and make, it up, make up for it. Uh, that said, she's not a bad person. Learn to separate the two and you'll get far in life. Okay, dude. Uh, this, she made him write this. Learn to separate yeah. the two and you'll get far in life. She's like, and you'll get far in, in life. life. Yeah. 
Secondly, when I say she was, lol, is mad at me, I don't mean that she is deeply hurt and distraught. She's calling me an asshole, yes, but that's normal for us. If this was something that was actually hurtful to her, I wouldn't be sharing it online. Anyway, she would like for you all to know that she is taking your responses to heart and she is going to be more mindful of how she dines. She would like to add that she didn't think it was a big deal before because, as she puts it, she doesn't think twice about meeting expectations in her line of work, even if they are above and beyond the norm. She's just happy to meet demand, but she recognizes that not everyone feels that way. She's going to try to be a better customer. She said reading this was brutally eye-opening, but we both also found some laughter and had a good discussion. Okay, that... Um, that comment actually just he, solidified it. It for me. solidified that she is the asshole. He is being tied up right now, and she she's had like, gum "Tell point. them I'm reading this." My wife this. said, "You know, she she <laughs> wants to she meet, likes to meet a demand," and um, <laughs> she yeah. literally said, "She literally said, or he he sorry he said that we, I'm sorry that some people just don't want to meet expectations." That's what she said. Like they yeah. can't. I'm sorry that you can't meet my expectations. Because there were there were explanations Insane. that could have been given where she's like, I'm I'm so sorry. You know, like I just I'm very specific about things, and I I know and and all this stuff. But no, she said this, and it it solidified where she's coming from. This was an am I the devil, right? No. <laughs> also, she didn't say anything. He wrote it for her. Which is so bizarre. Well, she might not have a post, or might not have a. a account. I don't have a computer. <laughs> I don't have a computer. Uh, all right, here's your uh, here's your MacBook. Yeah, could I get um could I get more RAM on this? And bring it back. It's like uh, this isn't the RAM I not wanted. The RAM I wanted. Uh, all right, here's our last story. Okay. That's crazy. This comes from a great subreddit. Tales from your server. <gasps> oh, so, love. We'll get it. The phone call. I know we all have had those phone calls, the ones from customers after they get takeout and something was messed up. They can range from the upset woman who got the chicken when it was supposed to be steak and wants it com comped the next time she comes in, to the raging man who found one onion in his taco and is planning to drive to the store to scream at the manager and wants everyone fired. It's always a little nerve wracking when you deal with these phone calls. The procedure for my store when getting one of the, these phone calls is to get a manager immediately, but I feel like I can deal with these customers better than my managers. And my managers all know this, so I am allowed to take these calls. It was a busy Thursday evening because we have a burrito special, so the store was slammed. We also have Uber Eats, which means we have Uber drivers coming in and out getting takeout orders. On Uber Eats, the customer can sometimes write comments to specify certain things that they want done for their order. After we slowed down a little bit, we got an Uber order, and in the comments, the man said, could you please add napkins and draw a smiley face on something to make me a little happy tonight? Of course, after I showed all the servers, we all freaked out and decided we would write him so many notes just to brighten up, this, brighten up his evening. We ended up making over 50 notes, including jokes, drawings, and little stories, and added an extra side of queso. It felt really nice to be able to do something for someone. So, as I was getting ready to clock out, one of the other servers comes and gets me and says there's a man on the phone who wants to speak to a manager about something, but they're, they're all so busy, so can you take this? Of course, I'm like, oh, geez, I do not want to be dealing with this right before I leave, but I reluctantly agree and ask him how I can help. He proceeded to tell me that he was the one who placed the Uber order, and after receiving all the notes, he just wanted to call and say thank you. He started to cry on the phone, and I didn't know what to say, so I just told him that we loved serving him and we hope to continue to do so. He told me that he wishes he was able to come into the restaurant, but hadn't been able to leave his house in years. His little splurge every week was ordering takeout from the store. I started to tear up and asked him to hold on for a minute. I got, a, I got all the servers and put them on speakerphone to say hello from Chain Mexican Restaurant. We all just wanted to say, uh, have a great night. And all the girls got, got the cue and started saying, have a good night, enjoy your burrito, we can't wait to, to do this next week. I took the phone off speakerphone after everyone had said something. I told him that he was now uh, not only a valued customer, but a friend. I thanked him again and hung up. Now I'm sitting in my car crying, thinking about this stranger, and I hoped we helped him. Oh. 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 Yep. I was waiting for the butt. I was waiting for the butt. <laughs> I was waiting for him to be like, Buddy showed up and, I... and blew up the <laughs> restaurant. No. Held and then all of a sudden this car drives. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, the just a very write a happy face. Oh, that's so sweet. I really thought for a second he I was, was going to be mad about him. the notes. Me too. Which I was like, 50's too many. Do you have any? Just <laughs> too many notes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought they were going to freak him out. Like I yeah. thought he was going to call and be like, "Hey, I yeah. asked for one smiley face. Yeah, uh, you got to take these notes back." Oh, that's so nice. Uh, do you guys have any memorable, like, super wholesome stories from 
serving like the, oh definitely a lot of wholesome things happen it's um, just the bad ones stick out the, the it most. sucks but it did, you really probably sucks. you probably had days that like a customer brightened up your day oh absolutely some customers are absolutely amazing like oh i think i think a while back i had this oh this girl she had like lost her mom and she was like eating eating food by herself i forget um but I remember her being like, you could tell that she'd been crying all day. And as a server, I don't, I don't get too personal ever. Sure. I mm. like am in and out usually. Yeah. I am not like, are you okay, honey? Like I don't do any of that. I I just kind of let it be, and I, I very much like was kind, but like not over the top, just being normal. And at the end, she just broke down into tears and asked me for a hug, because oh she gosh. was like, that was like. Thank you for just like being there. And it was, I remember just, oh, and I forget which restaurant that was, but, and it was like a very slow day. It was like a lunch yeah. day. So there was like no one oh. really around. And I remember being like, it was just very sweet. And yeah. I just love serving parties, like birthday parties or anything. Cause I will make it the most fun. Nice. I will make it the most fun experience you've I ever had. I am the opposite. I think it's too much pressure. Oh. I, I'm oh. easy, I'm like easy. And also, I'm so extroverted and I get more energy from more people. So like a two top, I'm not gonna do as well with, but like a 16 top, I will be the life of, you'll be like, that server was so wow. fun. I am the opposite. Mm. A 16 top, I'm like, hello, let's turn on the performance. Where a two <laughs> top, I'm like, hey, let's get real. Order this, but don't order this. And order mm. this, but order this. I do that Let too. Let me get some taste for you. Yeah. I I love a two top. Yeah, and people are always so appreciative, like so, so appreciative. They're like, N servers never do this. I'm like, I think you don't go out to eat a lot because or, a lot of servers do exactly, they're like, don't order that, do order that. Yeah, yeah I, always, I always tell, I think maybe servers don't do that. Really? Yeah, because I get that all the time. They're like, I used to get that all the, the time too. the best server, no one ever tells me, that, or like, tells me what to do. I'm like, what? Yeah. What's wrong with these servers then? Yeah. Um, I definitely like when I go to a restaurant knowing like, not that I'm like, I'm brightening up this cus this this server's day. I like to know that I'm like, I am not making their day worse. Like, yeah. I just wanna be here. There was one time where I was at a restaurant with a friend and we were just, we weren't being like extra like awesome to the server. We were just like, they would come by and they'd be like, hey, I'm so sorry, this is taking a while. And we'd just be like, oh, it's fine. Yeah, and uh, but she kept coming back and be like, thank you guys for being so Awesome, and I we could tell there was a table because, nearby that yeah. was awful. Yeah, but we were just literally being like, "Oh yeah, it's whatever." Like, yeah, whatever. To the point that at the end, she was like, "Do you guys want to do a shot with me right now?" And we were like, "Yeah, uh, yeah sure." Like, <laughs> it was. We were just like, "Oh," and then she you brought us a day. free dessert, like a huge yeah. free dessert. Yeah, oh, I, I do that like, shit all the time. Oh, okay. May, yeah, I will always if if the table is being chill. Yep. The cooler you are, the more you're. And gonna they're get. like thinking about drinks. I'm like. I'll just get you tasters. Yep, absolutely. I'll get you tasters of everything. Try this. Hey, this was And there extra. are so many hacks. Not only does the restaurant have built into it for pe cool people. Yes. Like if you, the less you modify, the more you're going to get for free. Yep. The cooler you are, the more things you're going to get off your bill. Yep. Like, There's so many hacks. You're right. And the restaurant builds them in there. Yeah. And the servers know their own hacks too within the system of yes. the restaurant. Yes. Yeah, this one's so sweet. Uh, so sweet. Well, really just like a, an awesome one. Mm -hmm. uh, some comments here. I'm crying in the club right now. Uh, oh my God. <laughs> someone else said, take your fucking upvote. I'm ugly crying at this. Uh, someone else said, was expecting to feed my cynicism, but got hit right in the feels instead. Yeah. Yeah. Bravo chain Mexican restaurant, bravo. And then lastly, someone said, the service industry definitely has its downs, but brightening other people's day uh, always helps brighten my own. It has a lot of ups. It has also. a lot of ups. It's a service roller coaster. industry has a lot of ups. I've met some of the greatest people on the planet. I would say mostly ups. I, I agree with because you. Because most people, when they're leaving, they're full. They yeah. might be a little tipsy. Mm -hmm. They just had good conversation. And you feel good. You feel good. And I... I love stories like that because really, you really can change someone's whole outlook, someone's whole day yeah. by giving them food, giving them time, and you really don't have to do much. And I love it. 
Great. There's so many ups. And also what I love too, what I used to love about serving, is it was an amazing meditation because you weren't thinking yeah, about nothing. everything in your life. You were just, you weren't thinking about anything. You're in the you zone. You were just going. And when you're in the zone and hours pass by, you're yeah. like, oh, it's yeah. meditating. It is meditative. Wow. Man. Pretty cool. <laughs> and being in the industry, it, especially in LA, oh my God, every restaurant is connected with a web of oh, yeah. industry people. That's true. You go in, you're like, oh yeah, I used to bartend here. They're like, oh my God, free boom, this, free boom, that, boom. free that. Yeah. Now when I go out with H, every bar, it's boom, like he boom. knows someone from someone and it's like, oh, try these drinks. Oh, we got this new mezcal or yeah. blah, blah, blah. It's so cool. It is cool. Come out with us, Shane. All right, all right fine. Let's go to Chili's. Okay. Uh, it's far. I'll go to Chili's. Well, thank you both for being here. This was awesome. You're welcome. And uh, thank you for watching. Uh, be kind to your waiters. Be kind, yeah. be kind to them. And uh, let us know what other kinds of themes, subreddits you want us to cover. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.